According to the Prussian philosopher Immanuel Kant, human beings can only ever know what he called the phenomena. The phenomena is the world of appearance, that of which we can directly observe, how the world appears to us. In contrast, the noumena, which Kant argues that we can never know, is referred to as the thing in itself. In other words, we can only have the ability to know the world that is presented to us. Thus, the external world, or the thing in itself, can never truly be known. We can never perceive the noumena independent of our senses, and therefore we cannot compare it to the phenomena, to even see what it would be like. So Kant does not think that we can have this kind of knowledge, that is, knowledge independent of sense experience, of the world of things in themselves. Now that we understand the distinction between the phenomena and the noumena, we can easily see how God would be among the things in themselves. Therefore, not only can we have no knowledge of God, but we cannot even think about God. According to Kant, therefore, there is the world of things in themselves, the world as it is in itself, and also the world of appearance, the world as it is for us. We are at home in the world of appearance, at least in part because we ourselves have constituted it, conferred on it, somehow the basic structure it displays. But we have no grasp at all of the world of things in themselves. We cannot think about these things. Our concepts do not apply to them. They are in that regard wholly beyond us. Now God, of course, would certainly be among the things in themselves. This strand of Kant's thought, therefore, would imply that we human beings cannot think about God. We do not have any concepts that apply to God. Our concepts apply only to the world of appearance, not to the world of reality. Hence God, who is reality in excelsis, is so far above us, or beyond us, that our puny minds cannot reach him at all. Our minds and our thought and our language simply have no purchase on God. So some people who understand Kant this way, and think that Kant is fundamentally right about these things, conclude that we cannot think about God. And of course, if we cannot think about God, we also cannot talk about him. The central problem of theological discourse, not shared with any other language game, is the meaning of the term God. God raises special problems because it is a noun, which by definition refers to a reality transcendent of, and thus not locatable within experience. As the creator or source of all that is, God is not to be identified with any particular finite reality. So according to Kaufman, God is not a word that we can ultimately use. Rather, it is merely a symbol of cosmic activity. If God is the creator of the universe and all of reality itself, Kaufman believes that such a being would be so far above us and beyond us that our finite minds cannot comprehend him, nor can our concepts even apply to him. God is the personifying symbol of that cosmic activity which has created our humanity and continues to press for its full realization. So remember, Kant believes that we can only ever perceive the world of appearance or the world of senses, such as things like fields, cherry blossoms, monuments, cars, other people, phones, and so on. But Kant holds that behind the appearances is the things in themselves, which we have defined as the noumena, which the appearances belong to, and where they come from. Our knowledge cannot fully penetrate the noumena, and we ourselves are the ones who confer the fundamental structure of the world. For instance, it is like wearing rose-colored glasses. The world appears to be this way to us, because this is the only way in which we see the world. Imagine if we were born without rose-colored glasses. What would the world consist of? What structure? What would it look like? Since we have no way of knowing the structure of what the things in themselves would consist of, we thus only know the world as it appears to the categories of our mind, not as it is in itself. Now, of course, Kant's way of thinking can pose a major threat to religion and theology. For instance, if we are not capable of thinking and talking about God, since according to Kant, our concepts do not apply to God, then no one is capable of telling us anything about God at all. If we cannot think or talk about God, then of course we cannot think the thought that he has created the world. If Kant is right, theology cannot be about God. No one, not even theologians, can think about God. And if they can't think about God, they cannot write about him. As the philosopher F.P. Ramsey once said, what cannot be said cannot be said, and it cannot be whistled either. Consider all those who attend church, or the preachers who give the sermons, or philosophers that discuss God's existence. They would be thinking that they were all talking about God and attending what they believe to be about God, 
But they would all be totally wrong in thinking this way, since according to the Kantian line of reasoning, our concepts don't apply to God, and therefore these people do not know what they are even talking about. But why should we think any of this is true? Is there really a substantial reason for believing that we cannot think or talk about God? The suggestion is that God is so exalted, so far above us, that we with our puny and limited minds cannot hope to comprehend him. No doubt there is an appropriate caution here. And no doubt it is true that we cannot comprehend him. If to comprehend God is to know a significant proportion of what there is to be known about God. But of course, that does not mean that we cannot think about God at all. And it does not mean that we cannot know some extremely important things about God. Why should we think that we cannot know or even believe in the great things of the gospel? So why think that we can't talk or think about God? Again, according to Kant, God would be among the things in themselves, and human beings do not have the ability to think about the world of things in themselves. We can only think about the world of appearance. According to Plantiga, we should ask ourselves why we should think this is the case. That is, are we really not capable of this? So why should we think this? The basic reason, suggests Plantiga, is that there are some propositions independent of sense experience that we know, which philosophers call a priori knowledge. Here are some examples of a priori knowledge that Plantiga gives in knowledge and Christian belief. We know that nothing exists before it begins to exist. We do not have to go out of our way and search for things to find out if they exist before they begin to exist. We know that horses are animals. We do not have to go out and observe horses in order to infer that they are indeed animals. You know intuitively that 7 plus 5 equals 12. You do not have to conduct an empirical investigation to see if this is the case. You simply know that it is the case. Kant was perplexed that we possess knowledge independent of sense experience and thought that we couldn't have this kind of knowledge. However, Kant believes that we human beings do have this knowledge, but only because we have structured the world in such a way to have such knowledge. We know that 7 plus 5 equals 12, but only because we have structured the world whereby 7 plus 5 equals 12. In other words, we humans have laid out the foundation. But is Kant right? Why think we can't have a priori knowledge of what is real? Couldn't God create persons who are capable of that? It is certainly hard to see why not. And might we not be creatures of just that sort? Again, it's hard to see why not. Further, couldn't God create creatures who were capable of knowing important truths about God himself? And might we not be just such creatures? Once more, it is hard to see why not. It is hard to see much of a reason here for this momentous suggestion that we can't so much think about God at all. Further, there is something self-defeating about this suggestion. If we cannot think about God, then as Ramsey said, we cannot think about him, and therefore we cannot make statements about him, including statements to the effect that we cannot think about him. The statement that we cannot think about God, the statement that God is such that we cannot think about him, is obviously a statement about God. If we cannot think about God, then we cannot say about him that we cannot think about him. Perhaps there are things we cannot think about, maybe things in some other part of the universe. If so, we cannot pick out any of those things and say of it that we cannot think about it. Given the weakness of the argument, as Plantiga concludes, for God being above our conceptual grasp, not even being able to think or talk about God, and the fact that this argument is self-defeating is shown, Plantiga suggests that it is best that we reject it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram.